Wendy Wilson, and I'd like to welcome you to a special edition of Realizing Potential. I am really excited about today's guest. We've been making this happen for, I think, uh, a couple years. She has switched positions, and now she's back here uh, serving as our chief of police here at Albany State University. Uh, I know it's just a small group of individuals that are not familiar with her because she is beloved by so many. She is none other than our chief, Anita Allen. How are you today? I'm well, thank you. Good, good. I'm so excited to have you. This was um, this has been in the making for quite some time, but what we we are preparing to do, um, and this will actually air next week and in a couple um, weeks thereafter, because it's a, it's a timely topic that we're going to be discussing. Um, so uh, it's not just relegated to or assigned to, to one week, but we highlight it. Uh, the University System of Georgia, in fact, does. And certain as we being a sister um, institution or a, a member of that governing body. We also recognize it here at Albany State University and work very hard to practice um, all of those areas that fall under ethics. And so we had some colleagues on um, a couple weeks ago and they shared their thoughts about uh, how it is applied on a daily basis and the steps that we need to do to ensure that we have a very um, ethical culture here, if you will. But before we embark upon that conversation, share with our viewers a little bit about yourself, uh, what you do so well here at Albany State University, but just kind of give us a little history. Okay, well, I'm back in the Ram Nation. I'm back home at Albany, Georgia at the unsinkable Albany State University. I serve as the Chief of Police I'm at Albany State. Um, my primary goal is to make sure that I ensure the safety of the campus of our faculty, staff, and students. Uh, we have approximately over 6,200 students um, at our university, and those are students that are on and off campus. We have a total of 11 dormitories and I um, supervise a department of 37 currently right now that includes police officers, sworn personnel, communication, and civilian. And what we do is we partnership with our campus community and we try to be a resource um, to our faculty, staff, and students. Outstanding. You do a really great job um, at what you do, just and, and certainly not only respected, and you served at another USG institution, uh, but certainly respected throughout um, the state of Georgia and beyond. And we know you are, are traveling right now. So thank you so much for taking the time, um, uh, stepping away uh, from your conference to uh, partake in this conversation. But again, it's, it's really critically important. Um, I know you have uh, you have the benefit of engaging with all our stakeholders, faculty, staff, and certainly our students, and making sure that not only they're safe or we are safe, but we are adhering to the policies um, and the systems that we have in place to help ensure that safety. Speak uh, in terms from a, a campus safety officer um, um, lens your thoughts on ethics and what you do to educate those stakeholders that I mentioned earlier on what their role is in ensuring that we, we practice that in the proper way. Well, of course, again, we know that excellence is the standard for all many states. So we do implement that throughout our police department to include our interns and work study students. Um, for a law enforcement officer, ethics is key because we are um, the ones that the public is going to trust and have trust in. We have to have integrity where when someone's looking or not looking. So we have to make sure that is instilled in us. And a part of ethics, that's making sure that we're professional at all times, how we greet, meet, treat people, how we work our cases, how we police, how we do um, community engagement, and the things that we do even in closed doors when we're investigating, writing reports, and that's um, on and off duty. It's very important because the spotlight is always on us when we think that no one's looking, someone is always looking. So we have to carry ourselves um, in a position where there is trust and we understand that the public is trusting us to ensure that we're gonna uphold the law, we're gonna do our jobs, we're gonna um, respond um, respectfully with compassion um, and passion in what we do because we have so many different elements to our jobs uh, when it comes to investigations, when it comes to our 911 center, with our communications officers, which is so key to have um, professional standards and ethics in that role. 
because we're just on the spotlight all the time. And it's just very important. We cannot operate in our jobs without ethics. Well, well, thank you for um, highlighting one particular point, and, and I'm not sure how I how I missed that. Um, and that is the demonstration and exampling of those behaviors that you look for in, in other people. And so we've seen that um, in terms of law enforcement on a on a societal scale, if you will, when that absence or there's a uh, occurs or there's a void in that or some type of infraction. The, everything is just shifted and tilted. And then oftentimes other members of the society outside of that law enforcement space then use that as an excuse as to why um, there is failed trust across, across the board. So when, one, when, when there's one mishap or one failure with one individual or one organization, then all law enforcement is lumped into that category. So Thank you for uh, reminding us of that. And so you all are held actually at a at a different uh, to a different standard and a different level. You are constantly engaged uh, with our with our students, and it's important that I know uh, you build a healthy relationship with you with them. And part of that is to establish that trust so that they can reach out to to you in in any time of need. And then again, that exampling piece that you mentioned, they too then can behave in that way or in a way that aligns with uh, proper ethical behavior. Uh, speak to some of the conversations uh, or the opportunities to teach our students about uh, proper uh, ethical uh, uh, standards and practices specifically life after Albany State University. That's just so important. And I've, I know I've heard you mention that to them on several different occasions, but just share with our viewers some of the things that you say to them that aligns with making those right decisions now. So um, I'm just smiling when you say that because that is consistent all the time um, with the students. I engage um, in every opportunity that is available um, to me. And a lot of times the students will make those opportunities more available um, than often. But a lot of things that, let me tell you the most important thing that I tell them. You have to value yourself first before anybody else will. That's very important while you're, you're actually in um, school and studying your, your, your coursework and being prepared to be in the community. You have to value yourself, value the education that you're receiving, and value your freedom. If you can take those three things and remember those in every decision that you make, you will be very successful. And the reason why it's so important to value who you are, because a lot of times you have to monitor what circle that you have that's around you. Everybody that's in your circle may not be healthy for you. They may not be good for you. So you have to make the decision and to discern those uh, relationships. Are they good or bad? Whether that's a relationship, um, with a significant other, if that's a relationship, you brought somebody from high school, you guys have been friends, but now it's a little different in the college world, or whether that's a relationship and just who you um, just want to take, partake in activities with on and off campus. Value yourself. If you value yourself that you're important and you love who you are and you respect yourself, you're not going to put yourself in a position that is going to do some harm to you or bring unhealthy activity to you. The other thing about valuing your education, the whole purpose of being at Albany State University is to become better, successful, get the coursework that you need, get your, like the students say, degreed up, get your degree so you can be in the world and be successful. You don't want to have to have these challenges where you have to go through the spiritual of student code of conduct, having um, a run in with campus safety or off the campus with any other local um, surrounding law enforcement. So you have to value what that education means to you. Respect your professors, respect faculty and staff, respect those that are trying to help you. And if you do come across challenges from faculty and staff or anybody that you feel that may not um, provide the professionalism, then go to people that are in positions that can help you um, rectify that, if there's a mediation, or there's conflict that needs, we can do that for you. The other piece is um, your freedom. You have to value your freedom. That is so important. And the reason I tell the students that, because a, a lot of times we get into the hype and our emotions kind of take control of, of what's going on. It could be, um, let's use homecoming. It could be a game. It could be a basketball game, or it could be just, you know, we're going to chill out. 
at somebody's house so they just have a good time. Well, now you have to value your freedom. If it looks like it's something that is not right, you have to make the choice. Brick pressure is real. Will I leave? Am I, am I okay enough to leave and strong enough to leave? Even though when the music's hype, I'm feeling good, looking good, smelling good, my hair is right, my hair could, all of that stuff is a factor that we don't think about until it happens. Are you strong enough to walk away? And if you're strong enough to walk away, you value your freedom. That means you value who you are, you value your education, you have some business to do. That means you're gonna be working your way to be almost perfect in the real world because you're knowing how to make these decisions now. But if you hesitate and you don't make the right decision and you decide to stay in what you see that is not healthy or right, then now you're sacrificing everything that I just told you and you could go down the wrong road. And you don't want anything to prevent you five or 10 years later from now when you see this opportunity for a job that you've been waiting on for so long, you have the education, you have the degree for it, and it take, now it boils down to you and two other people. It's a background check. Um, it's going to be a student code of conduct or what that social media may have looked like four or five years ago. So the ethical, everything you said was so profound and, um, um, and, and accurate. And so I'm just thinking about the whole uh, ethics landscape and of course the culture, it is so very broad and then you know also very specific depending upon what the moment or, or the instance um, is. So I thought of a couple different things. Um, and so we're dealing, this is a, uh, we're, we're helping to mold and develop minds. And uh, now the studies are showing that that frontal lobe that helps with reasoning and logic and making those wise decisions, uh, they, they keep pushing the, the goalposts. So they're saying, I remember it used to be 22, now it's like 25 or 26. I share that to say, um, you know, our, our young people and our, our students here, um, and, and this is not just specific to Albany State University. This is, you know, post-secondary education of the whole, that whole space um, that sometimes they don't make the right decisions. Um, and then there's a, the associated consequences. And so what I know you educate them on is just operate as if someone is always watching you. Yeah. yeah, someone Absolutely. or some system that they have access to. So that will be helpful. And even when you forget that, um, and I know we talk about this early on, and you alluded to this, making sure that you're you, you're in the right circle. So having a trusted accountability depart, uh, partner, someone who can say, "Hey, wait a minute, that 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 may have some." certainly some short-term consequences, but even some long-term consequences in helping to make those, those right decisions, because you're absolutely right. The recovery process um, may not uh, be to your liking, and it, sometimes it may not uh, occur at all. It right. may have some lasting implications. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the beauty of it is we're dealing with the generation now, you have to be very transparent. So you have to give examples. The way we talk about ethics and morals and values, um, it's a little bit different how we were brought up in it. So now we we have to, myself, I actually have to sit down in group settings and give examples of why this is important and why you need to practice good ethics. Because sometimes um, it's, it's still that Y generation now. Well, why, why are you saying I have to do X, Y, Z? Well, this is why, because if you don't do this, then as a result, it can happen this way. So, but they're very receptive to it. Um, I love interacting with our students in small settings and big settings, especially new student orientation coming in. I love the fact that we have a relationship. I tell our students that campus safety is a resource it's not just a police department, but we are a resource to help them. So when I'm called and say, hey, can you come in and just talk for five or 10 minutes? I try to make every available appointment that I can and stay in their face all the time. One thing that does um, for them and me, it builds trust, it builds a relationship. So when they are in crisis mode, when it's an ethical issue and they're trying to make a decision and they feel that they can call first, I have done my job and, and that's what I want to hear. I would rather for them to call, we talk about it, we discuss it, we have a mediation among one another. Whatever it takes to have this student to be successful, that is what campus safety do for our students. 
Yeah, you, you certainly um, have, have did, demonstrated that um, when you were here at Albany City University before you left. That That's just uh, a part of your DNA, and it is so genuine. Students are, are certainly receptive to that. It was important that I have this conversation with you, uh, particularly as we focus on Ethics uh, Awareness Week. Um, because oftentimes when you apply it to um, a, a student or, you know, uh, marry the two, if you will. So how does ethics awareness um, affect the success of a student? And oftentimes people just tone in, oh, it, it, maybe you're just talking about academic integrity and, and how they behave in the classroom and, um, you know, plagiarism and, and cheating um, as it relates to you, your academic performance um, and not being accountable for your specific role um, in that area. And it is so much broader than that. And as you just said, making those decisions that can impact your, um, what is it, I lost my train of thought for just a moment, background checks. Uh, so when you when you go to seek that that job that aligns with your career path, they're they're checking to see how you have behaved in the past and has that been documented. Um, and in addition to, I told this to students. I'm sure you do too, uh, Chief. Um, of course, there's a background check, but you know now we're in the age where everything is uh, can be captured or uh, researched through Google. Yeah. 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 Social media. Um, I've oh. had several conversations. So we we have to talk about ethics to our students in social media, and not only yes. students, even the, even adults, even yes. um, faculty and staff. We have to just make sure that um, we are performing again. Excellence is the standard. It so is. if we're saying that, we need to make sure that we are operating in proper ethics. Ethics stays consistent. Values can change from, from, from person to person. It's what they particularly believe in to achieve their goal. But ethics doesn't change. It's going to stay consistent. So um, when it goes back to social media, be mindful when I tell the students, you know, if, you, if you're in this, um, this feeling where you want to express yourself, think about it first. Just, just take one or two seconds and think about it and read before you hit post or click, because you don't want to do anything to um, appear to others that you are sabotaging someone's um, reputation right. or that you are being misleading on a statement that you're saying or that you're supporting something that, that you're not because you're just going by what somebody else says. Even when there's a like, know what you're liking, know what you're putting a heart to. You know, we have to remember these things. And a lot of times, you know, students don't think about it. Sometimes I'll just say even adults, you know, we kind of get caught up in just scrolling or we kind of get caught up on, you know, Instagram or even I tell students, be careful about, you know, when you're doing your selfies in the environment that you're in, you may be capturing a picture where somebody's behind you doing something that's not legal and you didn't mean to do that. That doesn't mean you're operating in that, but because it was captured behind you, you know, you didn't think about it. You just hit post and now everybody can see it. So those are some things that um, I try to talk to students about, about. And that goes back to ethics too. And that goes back to, to values of what people um, believe in and, and, and what their, their goals to achieve um, in their values. So those are all, it's so broad, like you said, it's, it's wide. It's not narrow anymore. Um, it's year 2022. And it's so many different elements to look at when it comes down to ethics. Indeed. And thank you so much. We're going to wrap up shortly. And I already know that we have to have you come back um, and, and speak uh, specifically to, to our, our greatest treasure, our students. That's why we're here to, to serve them. But I'm so um, happy. Thank you for bringing up the point of social media. Um, we have seen lives, uh, careers, I'll say careers, but careers absolutely ruined and in shambles. And again, Everybody doesn't have the luxury of a of a fixer or an attorney to come and clean that up uh, mm -hmm. because it requires resources. And even that aside, um, uh, people have long memories. 
And mm-hmm. so they'll recall, I was sharing this with somebody the other day. So I understand they were uh, preparing for um, a job interview and um, actually was on the other side of the interview and they were checking references. And I said, well, you have to be mindful. They're not only just checking the references that you're listing, they're making phone calls. So if they know someone at that organization, they're, you know, they're calling, hey, I know uh, Chief Anita Allen. So let me call her and see what she knows about, you know, Wendy Wilson. Yeah. So we mm-hmm. always have to be mindful of that. The social media piece is a, is a blessing and, and it's a curse at the same mm-hmm. time. So you're absolutely right. You have to be mindful about what your posts, is it putting what you're posting? Uh, is it demonstrating or a display or an example of an unethical situation or environment that you're in? It's it's yeah. absolutely astounding how people miss that. We used to have this conversation there now uh, young adults, but I would tell my my two children all the time, take that down, take that down. And so they're like, oh, mom, I, you know, I'll take it down. I said, but I'm glad you took it down. But here's the, the other side of that. Who took a screenshot of it? Right. Because that becomes documentation right. of, um, you know, something that is not representative of you down the road. You have to think five, 10 years down the road Absolutely. when you're trying to embark upon your career. Um, and so you may say it's done in, in a sense of your, you know, your youth or your teenage years, but it, it can have lasting effects. Absolutely. Good deal. Good deal. Well, thank you, Chief, for this uh, conversation. There's so many things that we need to continue to discuss. Uh, but um, as we wrap this up, just give our viewers, our, and again, of course, our, our key stakeholders, our faculty, staff, and students, some just great advice as it relates to ethical practices. Well, one thing I, I say to everyone, just always remember, treat others as if you would want to be treated in the manner of respect and honor and integrity. And always have compassion, even if you're not receiving that on the other end, continue to be ethical and have integrity and just do what's right. I couldn't have said it any better. That's why I asked you to say it. Chief Anita Allen of Albany State University, thank you so much for all that you do. Uh, 24 hours, seven days a week. Um, And I know your way, but you're still, um, and it's work related, but you're still always connected to our institution and just an amazing um, ray of sunshine. And we are so pleased and honored that you decided to come back home and uh, just share your uh, astounding level of expertise. So I thank you for all that you do. Thank you. And thank you for having me. My pleasure. Viewers, thank you so much for joining us for this special edition of Realizing Potential. I'm Wendy Wilson, and I look forward to seeing you next time.